This week's episode is brought to you by HumanGo, Super League Triathlon's official AI coaching partner. HumanGo is a unique training platform that will improve athletic motivation and performance because it understands how we train and why we train. Hugo, their AI assistant, understands your goals and changing commitments to continuously build an adaptive training plan with regular guidance for athletes of all levels. Hello and welcome to another short shoot show. Geez, we're pumping them out because it is arena game season and we are getting close to the grand final and another short shoot show that's brought to you by Human Go, a unique platform designed to improve your athletic motivation and performance, both key points for me that need improvement. Uh, and only one of us needs because this is the rest of the team. It's not Chris McCormack that needs it. He's a four-time world champion. It's not Tim Don that needs it, although now he's only the second fastest time man ever. And it's certainly not Annie Emerson, who still cut the fine figure. Uh, it's me. It's me that needs the performance and motivation help. Um, and me and all the other well-meaning age groupers out there who don't have professional coaches. Very special segment later called Coach's Corner with Lance Watson, who's a triathlon hall of famer, gold medal winning coach, and an Ironman master coach. There's only four of them, Ironman master coaches, and he is one. Before that, it's this lot talking arena games. Team, I'll start with, I'll start with the people who are on deck um, in London. Uh, Tim Don, looking like these two, Annie Emerson and Tim Don, look like Hermione Granger and Harry <laughs> Potter out there on the pool deck, first of all. Um, but I'll start with you, Harry. Um, how, how was it out there? It, it was so good to see the crowd, so good to see the atmosphere uh, come through the screens where Macca and I were commentating it back in Australia. Um, but how was it? How did it feel like to be there? Oh, it was, it was amazing. I mean, um, it was good because looking in the crowd it didn't hurt my neck as much because I'm used to watching Quillich all the time and it's obviously a 3D game <laughs> um, so that's that's really good but honestly I was I was not skeptical that's the wrong word but I, I wasn't sure how much energy the crowd were going to add to the event man it was they lifted the roof and I think the, the production there was brilliant um, yeah they were all you could you could I went and milled around and you could just see everyone was buzzing um, and yeah the athletes didn't didn't let anyone not not let the athletes just performed amazingly as well. It was a great, great. I think, I think it was a proper arena games. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, Annie. What about you? What was your take on the whole thing from uh, from on deck? It was it was some great racing, some dominant performances, but also you know obviously uh, as Tim said, an arena, which is what we wanted. It was it was really magical. It was it was, and I think the final where we had the sort of like the fireworks going off as the athletes came out. When Alex G walked into the arena, like I don't get that emotional, but I was like, bloody hell, th this is amazing! It was absolutely stunning. Him on home Did I soil, see a tear? You know, Did I see a tear? Well, a little bit. I did. Yeah, I think yeah, a little bit. Um, and and so that was you know it was absolutely amazing. Um, and yeah, just all around the athletes and, and kind of, I think, stepped up to the occasion. And I think the other thing to remember is that's the only, you know, the fifth arena games that we've had. And it just looked absolutely brilliant. You know, I think Super League truly delivered. The team did a great job. Yeah, amazing. Lucky to be Well, there. these athletes are being, yeah, they're being celebrated like the, the true superstars that they actually are with, you know, Alex G being a, a generational talent. Uh, in front of the home crowd. Maka, you and I ate an inordinate amount of lollies because it was one o'clock in the morning. Um, but gee, didn't it didn't it look good? And wasn't it fun to wasn't it fun to sit back and watch it unfold? Yeah, look, we'd heard that it was a sellout, so I was really eager when we got into the studio here in Sydney at yeah, one AM in the morning, Will, you know that. The coffee in, seeing everyone flood in and seeing the, the big support around the Brits. You know, there was a strong British contingent there and and, and just just seeing the hype around that was exciting. When the call started and when the when we got called in, in in the studio, just to hear that energy, you could actually hear it through the, you know, it was actually hard calling, Will, wasn't it? I, I could hardly hear what you were saying. Not that I ever listened to what you are saying anyway, Will, but. <laughs> That's fair. No, it's true. Like, it was so much crowd noise in our headsets. We just could we almost could we were sitting next to each other. We couldn't hear each other. So. I mean, that's kind of, that's what you want. And, and we haven't seen that in arena games. We've designed something without the key ingredient. And then we got the key ingredient and it really elevated the performances, which was really cool. And, and, and so let's start digging into that a little bit. And let's start, well, we have to start with Cassandra Bogran, who had never raced arena games before, has shown some acquittal in the, uh, in the championship series. She, she won a round in Jersey. She's figured, but she's always threatened to do what she did on the weekend, which was deliver an impressive all-round performance that blew everyone else away. Built off a huge run, 
but also she had such great stats in the bike and the swim that it, it, she did a she did a best potter to best potter. So I mean, let's get all your thoughts, and someone can kick us off, and then just roll off the back of that if you please. But I guess to start with you, Timmy. I mean, she was she was superb, and she she didn't have a flaw. You know, I watched her in the heats, and she did have a flaw. Her transitions were 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 not good, and she didn't she wasn't getting up to speed quickly. But she obviously went back. Maybe she watched, or she saw, or someone said something. I she had some uh, supporters in the crowd who, you know, in the heats that were part of her team. Maybe they picked that up. But yeah, as you said, I mean, she got the quickest swim. She matched tw- two twelve long course. And she she still rode, you know, amazing in. And with a no draft rule for this race, it was mano a mano. And yeah, she was just dominant across the board. When she finished that first race, I loved the little shake of the shoulders as she got off. And I just thought, you guys are in trouble. You know, she 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 came with intent and she delivered. And when she has that confidence about her, she is like parallel to flora duffy over over you know olympic distance and shorter but she just doesn't always carry that confidence that air that french je ne sais whatever um but yeah when she's got it she's on <laughs> and um yeah I, I loved it and um yeah when she won it was like but of course i won i am cassandra and i just love and love it and um yeah no i was really impressed and as you said beth potter was rolling in from winning munich Jessica Liamoff, you know, she's only ever won in the arena games. So she was up to stiff competition in the Lions' den, you know, in London against the Brits, and she was not phased. I was so, so impressed with her overall performance. Who wants to add to that? Annie? I think, as we'll all agree, she's a massive talent. I think Mac has picked it out before where he said, you know, she's lacked the kind of, you know, the the finer detail that you need to really nail. We saw her in Singapore, if you remember, um, when one of the races when she out-sprinted Katie Safiris. I mean, she's an absolute bloody massive talent. Um, I think she she silenced us, didn't she, Tim? Because we kind of went, no, she can't come back from the mistake that she made, you know, in the heat. She, again, just looked a little bit sloppy but she came back and absolutely nailed it she left us all speechless like you know she really did um she's the real deal when she gets it together you know she's going to be tough to beat all round yeah look i i you've said it all i think i think you know cassandra bogran is the most talented triathlete female triathlete in the world without question she's been an, an incredible junior she's been coming through that entire french system and when she's in the mood is the when she and everything's fine. When she's in the mood, she's unstoppable. We saw it in Jersey a few years ago, her first ever performance in a Super League race. She lapped, She just ran away from everybody. And uh, she had that great race with Katie, as you said, in Singapore. And then, you know, last year in, in within the team racing, she was she built through the series, but she just wasn't there. She seems to get flustered when she's not in the right environment. But she turned up on the weekend. She has all the arsenal to do well, and, and she made a statement in that opening swim when she took it straight to Jess Learmont off the blocks. So the, the fastest swim exited the water. She she escaped on the bike, and the only vulnerability I think she had over the what the nine disciplines over the over the final was that opening bike where she got picked up by Jess and the others. Other than that, she just dominated. Her long leg stride really gives her a big advantage on that treadmill. We saw her in that first race when she jumped on the treadmill when the gaps had closed. How quickly she gets that machine up to speed and she settles so well and I, I just think that it, it really suits her she looks in a great spot she's going to be very very tough to beat all season and I think with Paris Olympics coming a home Olympics she's going to mature as an athlete I'm going to go a long way out and say she's one that the world has to watch as a, as a favor to pick up a medal in if not a gold one in Paris it's a big call it's a big call yeah, it is. It is. But, you know, Macro will back, backtrack on that later if it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> 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 oh, you take it out of context, no doubt. Um, before we get to the, the no draft, because that did change things, the, the, the drafting rule, I want to hear from you guys whether you thought it worked out the way you thought it would, whether we, whether you think we should keep it like that. Um, uh, but I, I think more... We've always talked about Arena Games as being something that can help an athlete deliver better performances when they go to Olympic distance racing. Um, and that's obviously important. Um, <laughs> uh, and and Maka did it just then as well, just saying, you know, like we can go to Paris. And do this. But is, is this becoming an, a discipline in its own right 
to deliver a world championship, where you don't have to worry about it sharpening you up for other races, as much as well as the fact that it can deliver you a world title. I always think of it like cricket. So you've got you've got one day cricket, you've got, and then suddenly T20 cricket came in, and it was something you went for a bit of a hit and a giggle for before you went back to one day cricket and test cricket. But now you've got people who just play T20 cricket, and that's it, and they're specialists in that. And I think of it when I think of a Justice Nishlag, especially who has these medium results in other areas, comes here, cannot believe that he does so well. He was shocked himself and he thinks, you know what? I'm not going to go to Yokohama. I'm going to I'm going to win this world championship. So is this another step and in five years or seven years? And you think there's guys that are just we've got a we've got an eight race series and they're like, that's what I'm targeting. Don't worry about the rest. Like and uh, Tim, I'll, I'll let you start with that because you're the one that told me that Justice wasn't going to, going to Yokohama, so I don't want to steal your thunder too much. Do you know what the big the big tipping point for me was? Is it London? There were two Portuguese athletes and there was a Portuguese representative from the Federation. There was a German national coach. There was loads of British national coaches. Um, there was a, was it Slovenian national coach. When national coach, Super League, it's managers, sponsors, agents and the athletes. This is going like federation wise and they're going to be pushing this the whole way to get into the Olympic Games. And just the way sports evolving, being with that mesh of the real world and the esports world. Um, yeah, I, I think people will be targeting this. I, I can only see the series get bigger. Could we have a race in London and a race in New York at exactly the same time? where they dive into the pool, then they jump on their bikes in their respective countries and they are racing each other in Zwift and then they go on, like, the sky's the limit. That's how Zwift works. I mean, I can race Macca tomorrow, maybe not Will, Annie, definitely, but, um, you know, and they're in Australia and I'm here on Zwift, yet we, why can't we do that with the arena games? I think I think you will. When, when a big nation, a power nation like Germany, Great Britain, focus on winning a world title, everyone else stands up. And the junior coaches, the development process, to get on any programme in Great Britain is your 400 time and it's your 3,000 metre time. And then as you get older, your 5,000 metre time. They're going to be looking at that for arena games, for team relay. Um, so, yeah, it's here to stay, in my opinion. I'd be confident racing Macca at this exact moment. Like if we had to race in the morning, I think we could. Pro I could probably do, do it. I've seen him swim, but it's, it's not what it used it's to be. That's all I'm saying. It's horrific. And I didn't swim good when I was when I was fit either. <laughs> <laughs> but it just it suddenly got that importance, and I think the partnership with World Triathlon, and then that the the ability for federations to put forward athletes and then monitor them, and it's just got what we've got is like a new path to a world championship title. And if you're just a niche lag, you know, as of like six months ago, you're like, I'm not going to become world champion necessarily. I finish in the top 40 in Europe and World Cup races. And now he's like, in a week, I could be a world champion. Like that's yeah. that's how quickly things have changed, you know. And I think that's just really, and like and like Justice, you know, Cassandra is built for this in some ways, and she stakes her claim for Singapore. However, she's not on the start list for Singapore at the moment on Triathlon.org. You can see it. I mean, I'm not saying that changes couldn't be made, but Herself and Beth Potter are on equal points, picking up 250 each from the respective two races. And then it goes Lena Meissner on 231, Annabelle Canole 214, so the two Germans who finished second and third in Munich, uh, and then Jess Learmonth on 214 as well. But the way the points work, I've worked it out, it seems as though any one of those five, uh, and the other four will all be there on the, uh, and are on the start list, if they win in, in Singapore, they win the world title. So officially now we've got a four-way race uh, well, others are like Anna Godoy, Georgia Taylor Brown, who is going to be there as well. She's also in the mix too. It, it's a pretty wide open race for for a title, and there's a lot on the line. Who who do you like from that? Because Potter, we we can't forget how dominant she was. And Matt, let's start with you. Like we can't we can't forget how dominant she was in that in that Munich race. And obviously, she didn't have her best race against Cassandra, but she still was a force in London. Yeah, look, what, going back to what the Arena Games is, and I'm going to come around to why it's this important come Singapore, is athletes can just focus on themselves individually in the Arena Games. It's a, it's a pool swim. You have your own lane. You're not getting tapped around or, or getting having to worry about starts or missing the right feet or getting around a swim boy and getting dunked. None of that happens. The same on the bike with the non-drafting. I thought the non-drafting was fantastic. I think it should stay. I think that is the way of, of Arena Games racing. I loved it. 
they just focus now just on putting out power, watts per kilo, focusing on, on themselves and the same on the run. So it's a very much a – the only time you're bumping into your competitors now is in that transition, those moves through transition. Singapore, that's not going to be the case. We have an open water swim for the first time in an Arena mm. Games race, which changes the entire dynamic of the race. Someone like Jess Learmont, who is a fantastic starter, who is going to get to that swim boy first, puts herself in a big position with a big bite ride to, to win this event. So very, very different to any Arena Games we've raced, but the open water swim in, in Marina Bay Centre, unbelievable backdrop. But it's a... This World Championships is definitely not uh, a foregone conclusion, and those athletes in, in fourth place and fifth place on the pro- on the points right now can use this different swim dynamic where conventional racing now comes back into play and, and position in the swim and how you get around that first swim boy and not getting dunked and not losing a, a spot is going to be big in the mix. And that could go against a niche lag as well. It's suddenly, or mm. Raphael comes back in the mix with such a big swim, puts himself in that same position. So... Very, very different event to watch, which will make this World Championships very, very interesting. Uh, All right, we wrap up this segment and we introduce a new segment called Coach's Corner. A little extra segment, a little bonus segment, if you like, uh, in this episode of the Short Shoot Show. And we're calling it Coach's Corner. And the reason we're calling it Coach's Corner is because we have one of the great Ironman coaches Joining us, uh, let's get this right, Olympic gold medal winning coach, Ironman champion coach, triathlon hall of fame inductee, Lance Watson from Life Sport Coaching is here to give us a little bit of insight into the coaching realm, Lance. Thanks so much for joining us. I know I'm, I'm getting you just as you're about to go out to dinner and get stuck in, so that's why we have to do it now. Is that right? Well, you know, um, it's better to get me uh, before my glass of uh, Cab Sav than after because, um, you know, who knows what will come out later. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're at different time zones, different challenges, but I'm glad we could connect, Will. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, it's good to hear that, you know, coaches of your caliber still advocate for the occasional glass of red. Uh, I, I think we're all happy to hear that. Um, let's talk about Arena Games because um, that's what we've been doing here on the Short Shoot Show because it's the biggest uh, deal going around in triathlon. There's another small race going on on May the 7th that I don't... I don't, I don't remember what it is, some regional yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's long and it's slow and it's arduous. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like we could do 350 short, uh, 350 arena games in the time it would take to just do the swim alone. Yeah, well, it, can you imagine commentating it? You'd be exhausted, right? Mm, that's why I like Super League. It's like bang, 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 get all my best jokes out, done, finished. Um, it's pretty unique, right? So... You know, I, I guess mm-hmm. I want to hear about it from a coaching perspective because what I like about Arena Games and now that it's a world championship mm. series is that it gives athletes that maybe that just gives them another route to becoming a world champion, another option in the same way that, you know, in cricket, it was, you know, you had to be a test cricketer or whatever. You have no idea what I'm talking about, but then they had 2020 cricket and it's short and sharp and it's brutal and it's good for a certain type of athlete. So. Sure. Do you feel mm-hmm. that way from a coaching perspective that there's another option here for people who are physio- physiologically uh, suited for this short, sharp racing? I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, it's first of all, to be a good triathlete, you have to be a good swimmer, biker and runner. And we all know that. But it's a completely different venue. It's it's short. It's fast. It's furious. It's hyper technical. And uh it's a different kind of athlete that's going to you know, rise to the cream of the crop. You know, I've said for a long time in uh, Olympic distance and Ironman, but particularly in Olympic distance, you have athletes who are striving to make the Olympic Games. And sometimes you will get an athlete who physiologically probably is geared to be, you know, an 800 meter or 1500 meter runner you know, at, at a very, very high level. And they're stretching their capacity to be able to hold a level for slightly longer. And in fact, um, Simon Whitfield, whom I coached to the Olympic Games, I always felt was a good speed, uh, um, high threshold athlete who was able to stretch it out over the Olympic distance. And if it ever got into some of the longer events, you know, half Ironman and that kind of thing, it was a little bit out of his range. And you see that with some athletes too, they can't take that next step to long course. So, so yes, absolutely. Ability to tolerate lactic acid, uh, ability to uh, dissipate that lactic acid quickly in between events, um, and to, um, uh, you know, bleed out the ears a little bit mentally too it's a, it's definitely a, a certain kind of um, focus that's involved with that kind of racing and intensity that is different from olympic distance so i mean we saw that in london i mean and you we've seen it again and again and i think of just as being the classic example but this is a guy who has 
reasonable results without being outstanding in, in Olympic distance sure. racing um, and a variety of other different racing, then he comes here and continually sure. surprises himself by becoming our most successful arena games athlete there is. Cassandra Bogrand, another example, because she's just so athletic and can turn that treadmill what, what over. What a performance. So well. What a performance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you look at um, – you you look at Nishlag and and um, you know let let's be honest. I mean to compete at any level on that uh, World Triathlon Series circuit, you have to be a very high caliber athlete. But he might not be able to really um, you know show off his true assets in that format. Whereas you put him in this short, fast, and furious racing, and he's able to perform above his anaerobic threshold at a higher level above his anaerobic threshold. Um, for a longer period of time than, say, um, you know, another athlete, uh, I would think like a Gomez, you know, um, the classic power athlete who just, you know, if it ever came down to sprint finish at the end, he would be in a bit of trouble, right? But he would just crack them at uh, five, six, seven kilometers because, you know, he could push that strong, steady level. So absolutely. Um, but, you know, the other thing that I think can't be lost in all of this is um, there are technical differences in arena games versus, you know, out in the uh, the world of a WTS. I mean, we're talking pool swimming. So things like your, you know, your dive start, your ability to break out quick turns, those all add up getting out of the pool quickly. Um, riding the trainer in Zwift is different than riding on the road. I mean, you have to be a good cyclist to be a good cyclist, but it is flat out, nonstop, flat line, steady, you know, anaerobic effort. And the athletes, you know, um, have this hyper um, ability to stay on top of their pedal stroke, you know, one stroke at a time and really manage that output exactly evenly. Uh, and, and they're getting that data feedback if it drops off quickly, too. So, you know, um, the ability to ride the trainer is different than somebody who's maybe um, able to jump around in a pack and find the, you know, the sweet spot and, and recover a little bit in the draft. It's a different kind of athlete there. And then, of course your ability to um, run fast and furious on the treadmill and not always in the same order. You know, um, um, sometimes you're riding after running, which is a completely different experience. I mean, we saw Alex E suffering in that second race when he started the bike because, uh, you know, riding after running feels a lot different than running after riding. So yeah, different athletes, different strengths, and it's super exciting to watch. Super exciting to watch. And, and I imagine, and I don't want to find out, Super, like, super fun to do, probably not at that level, um, you know, but mm-hmm. super sprint racing in general, even super league distance racing and stuff. I mean, we see it more and more with our age group athletes who maybe they don't want to do Olympic distance, they don't want to go to 70.3, but, like, you know, to go any sprint distance race uh, around any country and there's tons of people involved. And as a coach, you know, obviously, you know, you take elite athletes a lot. You can't spread yourself mm-hmm. too thin with age group athletes and everything, but... To, to mm-hmm. people who watch arena games, they want to go and do a sprint triathlon. How how do they work out how how to how to train for it first of all, and and, and yeah, where do yeah, they sure. go to try and get that kind of uh, plan? Because as we know, without a plan, you can go out swim, bike, and run. But I'm just going to stay in zone two all the time, right? Because I don't want to go further. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it feels good, and yeah, you can stop for coffee that's and it. all those important moments. <laughs> and that's a, those are valid reasons to get on your bike as well. Let's let's not have that be lost. Um, no, absolutely. So, you know, we all train different energy systems according to the distances that we're going to race and what our A goals are. So obviously, if you're going to train for something long, like an Ironman, you're going to spend a lot of time in zone two working on aerobic efficiency, but you still have to touch on those other um, outputs as well. You can't just go long and slow all the time. Otherwise, you'll just be long and slow all the time. Um, and then at the opposite end of the continuum, you've got Arena Games, which is highly anaerobic, well above threshold. And, uh, you know, you're still going to be working on a lot of the technical fundamentals of swimming and cycling cycling and running, and you're still going to have to lay down um, a bit of a base and some endurance, but you're going to do more frequent speed work throughout your annual macro cycle than you would for that long distance um, athlete. You're putting it all on the scale. It's all cost benefit. So you're not going to send an Ironman athlete to the track and say, hey, you know, let's go crank out some 200 meter all out repeats because it's going to destroy their two hour long run, you know, a couple of days later, because they're going to have tissue damage and sore muscles. And on the other hand, you're not going to send the, uh, you know, the arena games athlete for that 
two, two and a half hour run at, uh, you know, 330, 345 per kilometer if you're male, um, because they're going to be flat when they go to the track and they're not going to be able to lift and develop those specific energy systems too. So you are periodizing throughout the year, um, according to the distance that you're training, you're, you're making sure that all athletes are touching on all energy systems, but you're really specializing according to what distances you're training. And now the cool thing too, and you'll see it with these athletes is they all have these wearable technologies. Now we can monitor things unlike we've ever been able to before, you know, everything from, you know, right now output, you know, on Zwift <laughs> to, um, um, you know, being able to measure lactic acid, um, looking at HRV or, or heart rate variability, which allows us to see how well we're recovering. And uh, you know, these devices that we wear are actually monitoring a lot more than we actually know. And, and the coach's ability to use that interplay of data to help better guide the athlete is, is greater than it's ever been. So taking all of that data, obviously there's, you know, there's ways to utilize it for an elite coach like you, but, and we can look at it and I can go, cause I, sometimes I'll get on mine and I'll be like, Oh, don't train again for four days. I'm like, that can't be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, how old am I? But, but then there's, then there's platforms like human go who, who take all yes. that, package it up, tell you what to do. And that's what we deep down. Mm-hmm. That's what we all want. We just want to be told what to do. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, I've had this, uh, I would say, a unique opportunity in my career to work with uh, this um, company that is building this AI platform. And um, it's it's actually super fascinating for me. It's, uh, you know, we always talk coach about coaching being art and science. And I knew what know what I do. Uh, it's the net culmination of working with all these other great coaches and athletes for 35 plus years. Um, and where they're actually challenging me is they're saying, okay, well, that's great. Now you have to sit down and you have to s- distill this information, this experience, um, this feedback, your ability to um, read power files, et cetera, et cetera. We need you to distill this down into our algorithm <laughs> so that it actually will create a meaningful progression and program for you specifically. And by the way, it's personalized because you're wearing this smartwatch all the time, which is capturing all your data and it's going to adjust it for you. So um, when we take all that information and then we put it into a meaningful progression and the, um, the AI, you know, the algorithm, I'll call it, (laughs) you know, I'm not the guy that's sitting uh, programming this stuff, by the way. (laughs) It's uh, so it's, (laughs) this is way beyond my pay grade, but um it's able to distill way more information instantaneously than uh, I would say probably 99% of coaches out there, myself included um, with all my experience. And it's, it's actually been really um, interesting, even trying to game the system a little bit, you know, I'll do things like I'll purposely miss sessions or I'll throw in a race three days from now and I'll watch it recalibrate periodization according to the curveball that I just threw it. And, you know, of course, in the early days, it's like, oh, no, I didn't like the way that, you know, panned out. And these guys are geniuses. Like, they will go back and readjust um, how the program calibrates to make it right and consistently make it right, given, uh, you know, a multitude of variable of uh, input. So, uh, you know, of course, you know, when I started working, there's always this little bit of skepticism, like, is it going to you know, produce that gold standard program that, you know, I personally would sit down and and produce. And um, I have been just kind of blown away by it, to be honest. It's, uh, it might put me out of business. Yeah, I was just thinking that you're replaceable. Uh, Like I could probably do this interview with uh, Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they'd be like, remember that time in the old days when uh, Coach Watson used to have a business? And (laughs) like, because I know that you're one of four, uh, like, I guess, Ironman champion coaches, right? So it's you and there's, Mark Allen and who Dave Scott and yeah Matt Dixon. So we're yeah we're Ironman master coaches. And we help build uh, Ironman U. Yeah, so that's right. So you've got like two, probably the two the two men from the Iron War are there. You know, like so you, it's hard to yeah. get at that level, right? So there's, there's only four of you in the whole world. So when you when you look at what this does and the availability now for age group athletes, how close? Right. Yeah. I mean, where's the gap? Is there a gap? I mean, there's a human touch and there isn't, but and I know there's still a human touch as part of human go, but like how much closer is the gap yeah. than, than what it was in terms of access for me or any other um, wannabe yeah. out there yeah. to, to be able to yeah. achieve or, or access? 
access what Simon Whitfield did when he's working with you? Well, um, first of all, you better pick your parents well if you want to do what Simon Whitfield did. <laughs> Genetics do play a role, but no, I mean, um, great point. So, um, you know, I mean, basically, you know, the days of stock training plans and, and Googling stuff and finding it, it's, it's kind of in the rear view now. It's, it's, it's super obsolete. And we've been beyond that for a while. There's, there have been some um, better options out there, but this is, this is really taking the next level and, and distilling all the technologies out there um, all together at once. And, and that's, that's what's exciting about it. But I think the other thing that's really important, Will, and uh, you, you touched on something that resonated with me is, you know, yeah, there's four of us who are Ironman master coaches. There are um, a number of awesome coaching options out there for sure. You know, and if you're lucky enough that you have a great coach in your neighborhood and, you know, in your environment, um, uh, and you can access them and they're affordable, then that's a great way to go. Like there's no doubt. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, no matter who you are, where you live, um, what your aspirations are, we all deserve to explore what our fitness capabilities are. We all, we all deserve to have our own journey, our own body education. And this makes it accessible for everybody. You know, it's, it's super affordable, which is great. Um, but it also is, it's coaching without borders. You know, it's, it's, you can go and get a very specific, customized, personalized training experience. And, um, you're not limited by, you know, you just happen to have a world-class coach living in your neighborhood that you can drop in at the pool with. So I, I think it's, it's really, um, it's, it's really revolutionizing the way that, um, athletes, can and will train it it's the future of of our sport for sure awesome. in the same way that super league is yeah well <laughs> very good very good tie-in i see what you did there you've done this before <laughs> I, I guess i guess for me i mean uh, like it's probably time to, to, yeah. to wrap this coach's corner up but i was just thinking as you said that that there's, there's, a, there's a large group of people and i say that probably I, I imagine that there is because i'm one of them who are like you know what i want to do the best that i can do but i also don't want to have not only can I not afford to have a, like a, a coach, like a cute, like, a, but I also yeah. don't think I'm good enough to have a coach. So I'm like, well, you know, mm. like, I just don't think that's something that's in my, I have a family, I have children, I have things to spend my money on, you know, like I, I can't have a coach. Like it seems very self-indulgent um, just because to go and yeah. do age group racing. Um, but this takes sure. that away, you know, so you don't have to be like, oh, yeah. darling, yes, I spent this much money on a coach. Is that all right? It's like, I just have this app, this secret app that I'm <laughs> using. <laughs> Yeah. That, that isn't yeah, so that's dollars. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. She might not even notice the charge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, no, it, <laughs> no, it definitely opens the door for um, uh, all kinds of people. And um, it's, um, it's, it's super easy to use. And uh, it, it's, it's an awesome journey and experience. All right. Uh, that, thank you so much for, for your insight. Lance. And, and we'll, we'll talk again. Let's talk after Singapore, because uh, obviously we'll have a world champion crown. And I want to hear, hear your insights into how they made that happen. Because as we said, like there's athletes like a justice who is so suited. And then you've got athletes like Georgia Taylor Brown, who, who is the world champion, you know, and then there's just finishing fourth and fifth, which you don't expect from her. So it's really interesting to see this pathway open up and to get your coach's perspective. So thank you for joining us on the very first and hopefully not last coach's corner. Uh, absolute pleasure to be here. Will. thanks for having me. Annie, Tim, do you guys have, what, what are your thoughts on the no drafting? Because I just kind of skipped over that. So I want to go back to that. Um, because what we, yeah, we have an, a pure athletic competition now, as, as Macca said. It's pure swim, bike, run. What can you do? How high above your anaerobic threshold can you, can you go and how long can you stay there? I think it's great. I, you know, I think the, the day before we were a bit like, oh, my God, what's going on here? But it worked. It definitely worked. Um, it made it much more, I think, honest racing for me. And I think let's not forget really the reason that drafting was brought in is because they couldn't really police it. Nothing to do really with the show or the athletes. It's just they couldn't police it in the big races. And so in, in Super League, you know, I think, yeah, this is a way forward for it. I think, I don't know if you agree. Tim we both sort of chatted didn't we the day before the race and went oh not sure about this this is a tough one on the athletes and I think mainly because it was such a last minute decision but when it came down to it and they it made the race more exciting for me I still think we need to see a few more races in different maybe maybe two of the races like the 
maybe the one of the heats is drafting then the prologue is um, the pursuit isn't drafting maybe but um the gaps were a lot bigger so we started the last race and we knew who was going to win the men's and we knew who was going to win the women's because they weren't going to get a puncher they weren't going to crash they weren't going to swim the wrong way and it was a foregone conclusion well if you go back to munich um yeah beth was off the front but that medal set got silver and bronze medal there was five women jumping off the bike going for it so it can take that excitement, but it does bring out the pure athleticism of the athlete. And I do think now people will go back and train slightly different. This is so new. This is like moving at the, at the speed of light, how quickly this, this arena games has evolved from concept to Rotterdam, to a two race series, to a world championship series ratified by world triathlon. It is just like mind blowing. So I, I do like it, but maybe we should, maybe we keep it for Singapore. And then next year, if there's more, more races in the series, maybe we try where maybe um, you know, in the final there's three races, there's drafting, no drafting, because it's a different format. You run first. I'm not sure, but I, I think, um, yeah, I, I thought the racing was exciting, so yeah, it, it, it must 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 be working. All right, let's 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 talk men's and look back at London before we look forward to Singapore and get your predictions and, and talk about the start list. But uh, one man who we mentioned briefly there was Aurelian Raphael. He didn't he had a tough outing because uh, he had a I guess we're not going to call it a mechanical, we're going to call it a technical, uh, which is going to be a part of of arena games moving forward. The same way it is when you try and work your printer and it doesn't bloody work and you don't know why. Um, this is, these are the things that happen, and he was the un, unlucky one on, on the day with his avatar not uh, working. Tough for him. He obviously took it really hard. He looked so focused and ready to do it. Luckily, he already has the, the first place in the bank, so he had no real reason to, from a world championship sense to, to compete other than he wanted to do it and get sharper at it. Um, Thoughts on that and how maybe we can mitigate moving forward. I mean, any suggestions like we, Macca and I discussed the idea of having like almost like a repercharge charge if anyone has a technical and have them have a, uh, Macca explain that. And, and do you still think that that's a legitimate idea? It's just sad to see, especially when you're starting to talk world championship. And I know you t this can happen with flat tyres in races. And, and we talked about that in the, you know, when that race was happening. But when there's a, a, a problem with the, you know, with the technology and you've got an athlete who's chasing a world championship, maybe a repercharge charge, an advantage to go. Because the racing now, as I said earlier, with, with arena games, the swimmer's individual, the biker's individual, the runner's individual, give them the opportunity to potentially go through the motions on their own, outside of a racing environment and post a time. And if it's in there, that can happen. Like that, they, they can qualify. Because, yeah, I, I just thought it was really, really sad for him because he'd obviously taken this – I think he wanted to clean sweep this series. I think he really wants to win this world championship. And I think he turned up in London – wanting to make a statement to everyone in that in that stadium. It was a very pro, pro English, pro Alex Yee uh, arena. And I think turning up as a Frenchman in the UK after, off a win in, in Munich and, and being the favourite going in and being able to perform in front of that crowd, I, I think he, he missed out on that opportunity. He was very bummed about it. So I think we could do something. But as, as Tim said, we're, we've been moving at light speed as it is. So these mm. things can be the in time. And uh, these are things we can talk about with the athletes amongst ourselves and, and amongst the technical officials and come up with potential solutions so we're not robbed of, of great racing. Well, one point to that, I mean, and I thought about it when we discussed it. Like, imagine if you're having a bad race, you, you give yourself a technical somehow so you can have another shot at a repercharge later on. We don't want to have that well, happen. That is not, well, 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 that is not how Maka, Annie, and myself think. We are pure athletes. <laughs> We're not on chair. That's Come how on, I Will. might pull a hammy. I might just like pull a hammy technically. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't unpull the plug. Honest, honest, governor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick, you know, pick your plug out. It's like a, you know when you when you, someone calls you and you don't want to talk to me. Like, oh, oh, it's breaking up. Up. Oh, sorry. This is so a you you thing. told me you always live. You told me where you live. There's no signal. Will are you what? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> as if Unbelievable. you would ever call me, as if you would ever call me, Tim, if you weren't paid to talk to me, okay? That's the only time you would ever bother. Um, I'll call you. Him. I would love to see. I'd love to see where, you know, they posted their times and then this guy has yeah. to go and he's got less time before the final and he's got to go out yeah. there and he's got to get an 11.24 or whatever, you know? Um, that, or that would bring half the distance, is half the distance, or so, I don't know. Yeah, but I felt really bad for him because it was, it was his big birthday weekend um, and he had a big, big time in London with his family. And I spoke to him after the race and the reason he was devastated, This I spoke to him like 
um, like 45, 50 minutes after the race, he genuinely, because his English is not the best, and all the race briefings in English, the ITU website is in English, or the World Triathlon, he genuinely thought it was London plus Munich and Singapore to be world title. So he thought he could not be a world type champion. But when I explained it, he was like, oh, and even when I was explaining it to him, I could see it wasn't sinking in straight away. So that's why he, like initially he was so down. And on his screen, it said, do you want to leave the world? And we've been told never touch the screen. He could have easily said no, but he didn't touch. And he's going like this and no one's going near him. We have referees. Maybe we have technical referees. Instead of black and white going this way, we have black and white going this way for the technical referees. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I, 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 I'm happy. Happy for him. I would have I would have let him sort of you know keep his run time and the person he was closest to but they they then give him the time of the sl slowest person and that's where he lost it I mean maybe it's not as simple as that that's, but it was quite obvious that he to Gordon Benson wasn't going to run that as well. yeah. It, it, yeah. exactly yeah it, it's a tough one well, of course, yeah. there, there, there needs to be something because especially if it's a you know, I don't know, we, we, it can happen in real racing and championship racing with a flat tire a mechanical or, or something happens so it is the unluck of the draw but you know, short dynamic racing we do have the time to, for them to potentially post a weapon charge or who knows well, i just I think like it'll that. bring more excitement it would bring more excitement yeah. to everything um obviously based on you know what the world triathlon and arena game triathlon officials decide on the, on the day but to get back to the rest of the racing i mean alex g came out to a hero's reception. He was quickest both athletically and in T1 and T2 in the first day. So he certainly had something to prove after um, missing the bike pack in the drafting race in Munich and finishing sixth. But then, you know, he only took three seconds out of Justice Nieschlag, who then turned around in stage two and turned that into a 16 second lead with the fastest swim, bike and run, and then won it by 29 seconds. So like a fine wine, Justice Nieschlag did what he does and weathered the storm early and got better across the course of the three disciplines. So um, thoughts overall on the men's race? I mean, after we saw Alex Yee first up, with I thought this guy's on, like he, he's going to do the job in front of his home fans. But it didn't work out that way. And like he always does, Justice has hung around and, and, and waited and bided his time and got better and better as, as it went on. So I don't know where his energy systems are at. He loves to be up at anaerobic plus. But... Uh, thoughts overall in the men's race, Danny, let's start with you. I mean, it, it was an interesting one. And, and again, the German was just just solid. Yeah, I mean, the second stage, I think, throws Alex a bit, doesn't it? When it's run, bike, swim. He lost seven seconds, didn't he, to Nischlag um, there. And I think that's really tough. I mean, he's swimming so well. So let's not criticise his swim because it has improved so much. But I think the more tired Alex get, you know, the tougher the swim's going to be for him. But I think he, you know, he still did an amazing job. Just Eustace was, it was too good for him on the day. You know, there were other amazing performances as well, you know, from Strada. I mean, the, the young Italian was just, this style of racing really suits him. Um, and then Max Stapley, who went into the final with the uh, the fastest heats, I expected more from him, but he'd just gone. I think he was absolutely blown, knackered. Um, but but he's one to watch. But Eustace was the yeah the star of the day. He just he just lacks a bit on that swim still, doesn't he? You know, it's very intense and it's tough. You know. Anyone else, Maka, yeah. Tim, thoughts? Uh, I think yeah, I, I agree. Strata's a uh, swim bike combination that non drafting format really set up his entire weekend of racing, and and that reverse order triathlon in the in stage two, that affects a lot of those big, those big runner lap, poorer to with you know poorer swimmers. It's, it's a, I say that lightly there when you in comparison to to the Raphaels and the and the Nishlags, and I think that is the big advantage. That reverse order is where those stronger swimmers with that strong run are able to to give themselves that margin of error to win those races. And that's why Nishlag is so imbalanced in this. I think uh, Alex Yee was phenomenal. I still think he can win this world championship. I uh, I think he's, uh, you know, the Singapore with the open water swim, he has to get out with a, with, a, with a big start. But his ride was right there. His watts per kilo were right there. He was aggressive. Uh, I thought he raced remarkably well. So, yeah, it was, it was awesome. All right, well, it sets us up for an, an outstanding uh, grand final in Singapore, and I mentioned it earlier, but um, double points on offer. So you take your best points finish um, from either Munich or London, and then you turn that into, and then we go in double points. So 
So, for example, in the women's, Beth Potter's on 250 and Cassandra Bograhan's on 250 because they won the two races. Then after that, on 231 is Lena Meissner, by virtue of her second place um, was her best in, um, in the first race. And because Potter finished second in the second race, there's no one else on 231 with her. So Annabelle Canole and Jess Learmonth are both on 214. Yeah. And then Anna Godoy, who, won't, who isn't on the start list, uh, 198. Georgia Taylor-Brown, who is also on 198. And then Zane, Audrey Merle and Gina Serino, all of whom are not going to be in Singapore at this point. So what you've got is Potter and Beau Grand on maximum points, Meissner and Canole, who are right there, and Learmonth as well. And if, if Cassandra Beau Grand joins us, then all of those, if they win in Singapore, will win uh, overall because the gaps are bigger uh, in terms of points for second and third than they are the gaps that they, as they currently stand. So what are your thoughts? Because it's now we've got, and, and of course, with any other permutation of results, it opens it up to a whole bunch of people all the way down the field because of the gaps even back to Sereno in 10th is only 70-odd points. And with 500 tops on offer, there's plenty of movement to be had. So what do we think about the women's, first of all? What are your predictions? Uh, obviously, you know, open water swim changes things. And Mackie, you talked Jess Learmonth. Um, if she gets out of the water first and, and you know, and, and, and ta- catches a, an incredible bike, she's going to set herself up really well. Look, I, I'm going to go with Learmonth to win it. Um, I, I think she prefers the... This style of racing, she's such a she's such a strong competitor across the board. But her swim is great, and and that that to that first swim boy is going to be very very difficult. Um, it's going to it's a very very tight turn, and uh, you've got still eight ten athletes there going around that first. She'll she'll be clear, and that's going to bank up, and that's going to give her the advantage to to escape on that bike. She puts out so much power on the bike, and we've seen once she gets Jess Lemont in front, she's a very very difficult. Athletes run over the top off. So Learmont the win on the women's side. I'm going to go with with the Frenchman to to win this race over on, on the men's side to just tap out Alex Yee from um, from, from each lag. No. I think Alex. Is- yeah, I I I think we're forgetting about Aurelian. I think he's. That's what I said the Frenchman, Aurelian Raphael. Yeah. That's who he's going to win. Oh, oh my yeah, God! Yeah. Sorry, God. I'm, I'm, I was looking at where uh, Jess, how many seconds Jess was behind um, Cassandra Bowie Grand, and she was 43 seconds down. But let's not forget, Jess had a really bad weekend. And for her to have a bad weekend, 10 seconds behind Potter. So I'm just backing what, what Macca said there about Jess. You know, she raced that half Ironman a few weeks ago. Her body took a lot more time to recover than I think she would have liked. So I think she'll be back on fire. And I'm with you with, with Aurelian as well, definitely. What about you, TD? Another thing we haven't mentioned oh. is Zanette. Zanet Bragmeyer's on that list as well, and she's a quality swimmer too. So I don't know whether that adds into the mix. Also, there's Sian Rainsley. We'll, we'll welcome her back to another one. She's probably not going to figure in the championship mix, um, but it's a pretty strong start list. Tim, what do you think for the women? We'll get to the men's in just a sec. Well, first of all, what do you guys, what's your take on the points? Do you think, kind of like in the Super League, if I, won, if I was, you needed like not just to beat one person to jump them in the final, you needed someone to go in between them? Do you know what I mean? Because it's almost like Beth Potter and Cassandra, they won. That is freaking phenomenal. Yeah, if they get second and Jess wins, Jess is going to be world champion. I don't know if they need to alter the points on the last thing, but that's that's above my pay grade. That's a, that's um, a, fair, yeah, that's a fair point, fair point, fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so it's almost like just as long as you get top three, you might as well back off because you're in, it doesn't, you know, it's all the winner takes all. Um, kind of like... Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Maka. I mean, open water swim changes it. Um, Jess likes leading. Um, she'll get out there. She'll get hustle. In Beth Potter, no, just you know, in the past she hasn't she hasn't transferred that to open water. Um, her pool swim, her pool finesse. Um, so I think she will be on the back foot. Um, but I mean, yeah. So yeah, you, you, the smart money's on Jess. But you know. With, with the runs that, that Cassandra put in, I mean, you know, there was no drafting. So it was, mon- you know, Jess got beat fair and square convincingly. And it was the first race where she lost the most amount of time. But is that showing her rustiness? Again, her transitions, she's got room to improve there. That's only going to benefit her. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be close racing. But, yeah, the smart money is definitely on Jess in the, the women's race come Singapore. All right. So we pick up a potentially a UK victory. Uh, I think, you know, I'm with you guys. I think it's very hard to bet against Jess Lee Monson. She, 
she's got a point to prove. She, she got she got denied by Georgia Taylor Brown right at the back end of last year. You know, after winning three or four races and being so good, and 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 that is the, the cruelty. So maybe the swim change that denied her at the end of the championship series could work into her favour uh, in this one instead. So uh, swings and roundabouts, maybe she's the one that walks away with the world championship title. In the men's, um, Aurelia and Raphael, we've talked about, and just a sneeze flag, they're on the top points at the moment. Max Stapley and Alex Yee are right behind them. They'll both be there as well. Uh, Nicolo Strada is on 214. He's not on the list at the moment. Um, but other big names that are on the list, uh, Gordon Benson is back again. Martin Van Riel and Hayden Wild come in to mix things up because um, Van Riel had a poor race in Munich um, and Hayden Wild hasn't raced at all. So like they're on zero points, but they could deny these guys a, a world championship title. They're two extremely high quality athletes. So how do we see how do we see the men's play out? Um, Mac, we'll go back to you again. I mean, what do you think? There's so much talent there. Yeah, it's exciting that Hayden's in and, and Martin Van Riel's back. Uh, I think Hayden's is a little bit in the best Potter situation. His swim is fantastic, but when you look at the when you look at that start list and the swim power on that start list, it is remarkable. And remember, we are talking very, very, very short dynamic races. 200 swim, 4k bike. Your position in this swim is going to be everything. That first 50 metres off that dive, I just don't think Hayden's going to have the horsepower to put himself in a swim position, even though his, his bike skills in the championship series are what he uses effectively to to move up. Mm. That's that's nullified in, in, in this style of racing. So I, I think Martin Van Riel is going to do more in this racing than than, than Hayden Wild, but it's just it's great to see the Falcon back racing. But I'm with I'm, I'm still going to stick with Orion Raphael to win this. <laughs> um, I, He's got a big, big point to prove. He's going to set it up in the swim, and he's going to be gone. And uh, and it's going to be a chase for silver and bronze between whoever puts their hand up first to take it. I'll go with Alex Yee and Nishlag for bronze. No, oh, I want to see. I, I want Nishlag to win the whole thing. He's just so he's so surprised when he gets there. Although it, it, it's hard to go against Raphael, thirty three years of age. He just loves it. He's the best, like he said he was. Um, and he brings a lot of flair, so I love, love, I love the guy. He just, <laughs> I'm talking about the race results. I don't know, I don't know how that correlates on points. Right, the, the race results will be that. However, the points yeah. play out. Oh, to the world I, I don't know either. I, I mean, that, the th- things could change between now and then. Anyway, um, I've heard a really and Raphael rap. Okay, and it is a sight to behold. I gotta say, they like they, those, the French contingent on Super League are after some weird stuff. I got it. Like they are, they are a strange group of cats. You think they're great. into some weird stuff now? Back in the day in St George Formula One, <laughs> they went to some. Said, we can't you even go said, there. They went to <laughs> there. You need to after this. You need to Google. Le, there's a new triathlon series in France called Le Frenchman for the age groupers, and you got to watch some of the content. It's uh, Benjamin Sampson with a red cape on, a French beret, um, a thin moustache. And he's just as you Benjamin. Oh man, back at the yeah. These guys learn oh everything God. from the old school. <laughs> don't don't you love those French guys? Bloody yeah. hell, honestly. I mean, I've never interviewed someone when they've gone, "I'm the best," and actually really mean it. But you know, fair play to them. You know, like you know, Not even if German. you're kind of slightly kidding with stuff. Well, yeah. Why is that? Is that what it's like there? <laughs> they all say that. <laughs> <laughs> We said well, the British okay. aren't like that, are we? Oh my god! No, <laughs> no you're like if it's if it's. Not, I would like to be the best. If it's if it's not, if it's terribly out. Of yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really out. sorry. Thank you. It wouldn't mean it's okay. <laughs> sorry, I'd like to be the best. <laughs> I'm just basically I'm just basing all of you on Hugh Grant. Like that's how I'm, I'm dealing with it well, in my head. That, that's, yeah. um, that's how we all behave. That, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Prediction for the men. Uh, Mac has gone with. Aurelian and then Yi and then Nislav. Does anyone have any thoughts different to that in the race? Yeah, the I, I would. I would say. Um, um, I mean, I, you know, I hear what you're saying, Macker, about the swim. Definitely with Hayden, but God, you know, there's not a hungrier guy out there than Hayden. Oh my God, I I love that guy. He he's he's such a cool dude. It's all about you know being successful, so he can make sure his mum's all right. You know, had a big conversation about where he's come from, and you know, I think that hunger can can drive a huge amount. So I I actually think Macker over 200 meters, he might still be there. Do you remember back to London when um, it was? Uh, 
uh, Van Son Luis and Johnny Brownlee back in the water and Hayden Wild just white, like he was nowhere near on their level in terms of a swimmer, but he was right up there because he was like, sod it, you know, I'm going with you guys. And he was virtually grabbing, you know, Johnny Brownlee's leg to stay with them. So I wouldn't bet against Hayden because I think he's so hungry, you know, he's such a, and, and he's such a talent, you know. Those are my thoughts. I'm not going to say he's going to win, but I think, you know, he, he's going to cause more of a problem than, than we can think for the other well, athletes. He hasn't, he hasn't but, raced as much as everyone else either, right? No, but that didn't affect him in, that didn't affect him in the Olympic Games. Did he, how much did he, did he race before he won he, that bronze medal in the Olympic Games? He's raced yeah, loads. Like, he did three weeks back to back sprint races, con- Oceana Cup. He ran sub 15 in all uh, of them. Yeah. He then went on the track yeah. and he ran yeah. 1343, not a PB, but it was a windy evening. No, he has been racing, racing. Yeah. He's done bike races. He's done like, yeah, he's done all sorts. Yeah, well, I kind of, I kind of meant it as in like he's not going to be beat up like he's, he's, He's been doing smaller races or whatever and doing well. Yeah. So whereas these guys have pushed themselves it's, quite a bit. In the final, is there still going to be te- are there still going to be ten male and female athletes? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's eight or ten in the final. Yes, yeah, so if it's sure. eight or ten, the, the open water fighting isn't going to be as big as the, you know in the Super League. We've got twenty odd athletes. You know, in IT World mm. Triathlon, we've got like sixty athletes. Yes, it might only be a hundred meters to the first boy, but um, with those, if Alex or, or Nishlag has a good swim and is there or thereabouts, they could still win overall. But the banker is Raphael. Yeah. I mean, um, things like Nishlag. Yeah. I noticed yeah. he doesn't use carbon shoes. In on the arena games, and he's cut his tongue out not his tongue, but his tongue out of his running shoes just for quick transitions because it is only a mile. He's really thinking like every second counts. Yeah. Um, and I think that attitude is why he's gone, you know, why he did done so well. But yeah, I mean, the smart money is on, on the person who doesn't have a weakness, which you know, we're talking Hayden, even Martin Van Riel swim, um, um, and obviously Alex and Nishlag. So yeah, it's got to be on Raphael. Um, yeah, and I'd love to see Nishlag take the clean sweep because, um, yeah, he's been so dominant and so focused and that's what it takes to become a world champion. Uh, we, we haven't even talked like Chase McQueen and Max Stapley swim as well. There's some serious swimming pedigree yeah. uh, in that group if that is in, if they all indeed do end up in the final. I've got to say the start list, and you can see it on triathlon.org, it's huge for the men. There's going to be 40 names there. So uh, onwards with the democratisation, I suppose. Uh, of Arena Games with our new partnership and the federations getting involved. We'd love to see it. And next week, we're going to crown a, uh, a world champion, which is fantastic. And it'll be a really interesting trivia question in 10 years' time. Who was the first ever triathlon esports world champion when suddenly it's a 12 race series and uh, it's a lot bigger and more um, in the public eye than even it is even now because it's been a really interesting and really quick uh sort of rise of Arena Games triathlons. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to wrap it up there. We're nearly at 45 minutes and I've got another segment coming up, so I'm going to kick all of you off. Uh, Maka, TD, Annie, I will see you all in Singapore because I'm being not let Timmy. out of the country. Oh, Tim, you're not coming. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, I'm what? He's abandoned us. He's abandoned oh, us. No. What? Yeah, well, why I'll get not? my hair done. Oh, again. <laughs> no. Oh, no. No, I've got to go to, I'm going to St. George. I've got to be there. for. I'm, uh, unless you yeah. can talk to Zwift. I'm going with the Zwift Triathlon Academy um, to St. George. Uh, That's right. my fly tomorrow. Of you are. Yeah, right. But, yeah. I didn't even... It's just some small race, isn't it? I haven't mm-hmm. heard much about it. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, hang on. Before we go, real quickly, who's going to win Ironman World Champs? Men and women. Ooh. Maka, go. Mo Phillips. Yeah, she, she's got um, just on Instagram. She's sick, so ah, oh, um, look at the no. moment. She's got a really, really bad cold. That's what I was saying, everyone. So I'm going to go with uh, I was going to pick a Laura Matthews, a Laura Phillips, mm. or a Cat Matthews. Um, Kat but Matthews. I think Daniela Reef. We keep forgetting about Daniela. Don't ever, don't ever forget about mm. someone that day. Uh, on the men's side, I'm going to go out and say either Gustav Eden or Lionel Sanders, um, because of the bumpy uh, course there. And Christian will be strong, but can he run over the top of Gustav or Lionel? We'll see. Anyone got any different suggestions to that? Uh, no, no, Sam Long here to crash and Pat as well. Sam Long to crash? Um, he, no, he had a crash yesterday on his bike. <laughs> That's a big call. A Very specific call. Oh, did he really? Who got hit? Sam Long. He said he's okay oh, and fine, but he did get taken down and he's had to have a day or so off. Um, but yeah, you, you can't miss. What about Alistair? No, you're not back in. 
Well, I, I want Alistair. I would love Alistair to win it. I love it, but I always pick Alistair, no. so I don't want to look like too big a yeah. fanboy. I think Ali can win it, but I just think uh, – I think um, this this course suits Alistair. This short course suits Alistair too, with those yeah. bumpy hills and he's uh, won there before the convincingly. He's won, won there before. before it's dry it. heat. I think Alistair can win this thing, and I would he would be my overwhelming favourite to win it. But I don't want to look like a fanboy, so I'm, I've gone with <laughs> Lionel Sanders after that California performance. Yeah, I'm just yeah, picturing. I think the Norwegian. Yeah. It's going to be a Norwegian one too. I'm just picturing Sam Long having a bike crash. It'd be like, yo, 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 my God! Like, it'd be, uh, it'd be <laughs> <a certain> one. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you to everyone. Uh, we'll see two of you uh, in Singapore. Tim, you're fired. Enjoy. Oh, your yeah. Maybe I can do a spell to get there. I don't know. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> you're really owning your space, Harry. Well done.